I really love is public transit. And I go to socialist meetings and I'm super into collectivism and I'm a vegan and I kind of believe astrology is true now, but that just happened since I started living here. <laughs> so <laughs> that's not my background, but here we are. And I didn't move here when I was 18 because there, there wasn't public transit as far as everyone told me. That probably wasn't true, but it has improved. And we know that the state of California is planning for a time in the future where private car ownership is almost non-existent. That's really cool. <laughs> like, how forward thinking is that? How good for the environment is that? You guys, we're so lucky to live here. There are a couple of other things I love though. Um, I, I truly love uh, being outside. I truly don't love losing my train of thoughts and nervous, but I do take transit a lot. I do walk around. And one of the things I've noticed here is that there's this diversity, right, of human experience, of ethnicity and gender and orientation, all of these things. And that's so valuable as well. And I think that even though sometimes public transit can be terrifying, because what I've realized is that like, you think someone might be a chef, but it, it could just be a dude with a bunch of knives. <laughs> it's not like a cop, there's no ID, right? They don't have to carry a badge. It might just be a man with a ton of knives. It's totally worth it. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Stephanie. Now I'm gonna bring up a busted regular and then you wanted to go up, is that correct? And then I'll bring you up. So I'll go, uh, new person, busted regular, new person, busted regular. Come on up, Chris Corbell. Right. Busted favorite. Oh, Thank you, Scott. Thank you so much. Give it up for Scott. Very fine time. So, five days a week, I go to a gym. I live in Westwood Village. My gym is in Culver City. That means I take the 734 or the 788 from Veteran and Wilshire to uh, the Expo and Bundy line. Then I get on the Expo and Bundy. I get off at Culver City. That's it. I get up at 5.30 in the morning. By the time I get to the gym, it's exactly 6.30. By the time I'm done stretching, getting ready, hit the gym at seven, I'm finally waking up. So for those two hours, I am just a zombie. And the only thing that's keeping me going is um, this weird kind of thing I take for energy for working out in my Spotify account. So all I'm doing is just pumped up on like Duran Duran. Oh. And I've now made it, it's 6, 620. I am standing on the platform of Expo Line, Expo and Bundy. I'm gonna cut my Duran Duran on, Notorious. And I'm just in my happy zone. At this hour of the day, there's very few people on the train, as there should be. We are quiet, we keep to ourselves, and at the station, we don't even look at each other. And yet, here I'm standing, looking out, waiting for my train, and what do I see? I see a young college student. And she is looking, not at me, but she's looking in my direction, and I know what she's looking for. She's looking for the train, which makes me realize she is completely lost. And I have to do this, and I don't want to do this. And I'm just hoping it really, I can just say whatever I need to tell her. And I'm not going to say, hey, schmuck, you're looking in the wrong direction, though. I would like to say that. I just say, excuse me, young lady, are you lost? She said, oh, I'm waiting for the train to go to Los Angeles Technical College. Does this train go to Los Angeles Technical College? I have never heard train of tech. this. I have never heard of that stop. And at this hour of the day, I have no idea what she's talking about. And then she points on the map, and she says, and I realize, oh, it's L-A-T-T-C Ortho Institute. Yeah. Because that's all I know. Also the courthouse. Good to know. Good to know. And the DMV. Anyway, once I realized that, I said, yeah, the train should be here in two minutes. Don't worry. You just get on. She said, any other train stops here? I said, no. I said, do I have to press a button to get out? No. Will the conductor announce the stop? And I said, well, look, I know where you're from. You have conductors. We don't have conductors. We have a PA system, and they announce the stops. So, and then I realized, and there's also a video screen, because we're LA, we're really that cool. So even if you w want to, even if you don't hear them, 
If you just always look at that screen, it's going to announce the station. We get in the car together, I go to point at the screen, and it's not working. I have to ride an entire station with my headphones off just to see if the announcer on the, on the pre-recorded PA is going to announce the station. It won't. Oh, damn it. She's got like 40 minutes before she gets to her stop. She has no idea where she is. And I just want to listen to Duran Duran for the next 10 minutes. That's all I want to do. I don't want to have to... I, I have only two more stops. So I just... I, I can see she's looking in her notebook. She's clearly taking great notes. She's studying for something that you study at LATCC. I don't know what. She, I have no ideas. But I'm amazed by her penmanship. And if this was some... If I was like a 20-year-old guy, this would be a wonderful opportunity to make time with a cute girl. And if I was Scott, a good bus ambassador, I would like totally be holding her hand and, and be enthusiastic and maybe even go all the way there to make sure she got to where she went to. But I have to work out. I need to just have my zone time. But it's not working. And finally, my stop is coming. And I look at her and I know what's going to happen. She's going to be lost in her book. And I say, and I don't know where this happens, I become her dad. And I say, young lady, there are two stops at USC before you. So you need to listen for both USC stops. Do you understand? That means they're gonna say it once, that's not, and then there's gonna give me another USC because USC gets two stops. So please make sure. And then I get off the, and I feel really proud of myself. And then I realize, of course, the PA isn't working, so there isn't going to be an announcement. And she's probably going to miss it, and I'm not a really good bus ambassador, and I can't enjoy my Duran Duran, because now I'm in the gym. That's my story. Thank you. You're a good bus ambassador. You did your job. You can't walk them off the, you can't walk them to their final destination. Yeah, well, you can. You can, and you will. Yeah, I would have booked her. So, uh, anyway, thanks for coming. Um, yeah, so Chris Corbell. Pretty good bus ambassador. <laughs> yeah, you know what's weird is uh, the Expo line always has mistakes on their screen too. So it would say L A T T T C or yeah. whatever it is, but it might be they might be hitting Santa Monica Beach or something. Yeah. You know, they just yeah. they kind of pull just random names like, well, you know, we got a one in ten chance of being correct. Might as well put it up. You know, you know, it's not going to hurt anybody. What's your name, Stussy? Uh, Dominic Ortiz. Dominic Ortiz. New Storyteller, come on up. Thank you very much. So, I've never done storytelling before, so if I get nervous, bear with me. It's okay. Um, so, my, my girlfriend lives in Crenshaw off La Brea, and I take the 212, I live in Van Nuys, so I take the 212 to the 656, to, to the Orange Line to get back home when it's really late. Yeah. Um, so, wow. I was transferring at Hollywood and Highland to the 656 and it was like two or three in the morning and um, I get on the bus and I go to it was pretty empty I go to like halfway into the bus and I I uh, go to the the aisle seat or the window seat and in the aisle seat there's like a little drone and like a controller for the drone and so I sit I sit there and there's like nobody really near it like there's nobody near me and um uh, I just sit there for a few stops and just kind of look around and make sure like maybe this doesn't belong to anybody's or anybody and uh, so then I, I kind of I pick it up and I start playing with it like to see if it works and uh, like it turns on like a little light turns on when, when I turn it on so I, I just held it for a little while and uh, till I was like almost almost at the orange line and uh, nobody said anything to me there was only like a few people on the bus and so I just, I put it in my, my sweater, like, pockets, because it's like, hey, nobody's saying anything, so whatever. Uh, so I take it home, and I get home, and I'm excited because, like, I have, I got a free drone. Like, I came up, and um, so I get home, and I, 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 it's like three in the morning. I'm trying to, like, turn it on, and it's not working. Like, the drone turns on, but the controller isn't controlling it. So uh, I look at the back of the controller. I open the... I was like, maybe the batteries are dead. So I check, I open where the battery thing is, and 
there's no batteries in it, but there's like a little plastic bag stuffed in where the batteries are and like a little like Ziploc bag. And inside the Ziploc bag, I take it out and there's a, like a business card all folded up. And I open the business card and there's like a little bit of crack cocaine inside of there. <laughs> and yeah, that's my best story. So. Yeah, did you get the drone to work? Yeah. Did? Oh, awesome. You know, I was half thinking like all of a sudden it would turn on and be like filming you in your place and then you get like a phone call like asking to return it or something because I don't understand that technology really that much. Hey, good to see you. Um, and uh, that's crazy though. Um, okay, we got one more storyteller coming up. Does anybody else want to jump up um, to share their story before we call it a night? Awesome, come on up, Wade. Yeah. Wade from Chicago. He's walked from Chicago to Portland, Oregon, and back. It's pretty amazing. Busted favorite, Wade Herter. Thanks. Oh, man, you know, the other day last Monday, I went out to Santa Monica. I had to go to the bank because someone went into my bank account for the third fucking time. And the cocksucker okay. took all my money out again, left me with 83 cents. I got it all back since then, but that's a side story and you don't care. But it helps me, goddammit. I'm happier now. But, I, of course, I don't own a car. I haven't owned a car since my, since my days as a young waster on the south side of Chicago. But... I took the train down there, the expo line down there, and then I got, so after I, you know, slapped around the cocksucker, you know, basically motherfucker banker, I went back on the train over on 26th and um, Expo, or wherever the hell that is in Santa Monica. So I get on there, and it felt, you know, for a while we were going, then we get down towards Crenshaw, and then all of a sudden this guy pulls out like gambling. It felt like, you know, I don't know, like my days in the back alleys over in Bridgeport in Chicago where you do the dice and everything. And he says, yeah, I'll give you two. You looked around, do all that, you know, with the thing and everything. And the guy's pulling out 50s and 20s. It was like Vegas. And the guy's comparing it like Vegas. Like, can you pick this? Here it is, 20. I'll give you 40 back if you got it. It's a trick because I said, the guy's got to be from Chicago. What do you know? He's from the west side of Chicago. I come from the south side. Rivals at heart. But then I said, I'm from Chicago. He ignored me. So then I began thinking, he's not fucking from Chicago. But then, but he did know the whole fucking story. Because every time you go to Chicago, we invented cheating you motherfuckers. That's how we did it. Corruption in California and all that. No, we invented it. Fuck Jersey, okay? Anyway, all of a sudden, everybody was going over. One person trying to put it on YouTube. Guy was just going around, you know, like that. And I'm sitting there thinking, there's no cop. I never see cops hardly and during the daytime at 2 in the afternoon. I, I, I'm financially wealthy. I don't have to work. I know. Just kick my ass if you want later. But anyway, so I'm going down on the train and I'm heading back and then everybody's like, and this guy loses $300, you know? But he said it's normal because, you know, he's from Santa Monica. They can afford it. They can, you know, it's the highest paid rent. He had to be like a millionaire or something. But but these guys were like doing it. I'm sitting there thinking, fuck, I'm sitting here. Throw money at me. I could do the card shake just like this guy. Uh, anyway, he got off before he went downtown because if he did that shit downtown, he'd been busted and be over at L.A. County for like a week, of course. You can't gamble on that. You can't eat it. Actually, you could. They don't even have a sign for gambling, come to think about it. They don't. But anyway, the moral of the story is if you don't post it on the thing for, you know, like warning people, you know, be PC, then everything goes. So there you go. Vegas on the trains on the expo line. Go dig it. Hey, we got one more special guest before we end the show. We always have extra special stuff because uh, that's what Busted's all about. But also, I want to remind you, we have a website, bustedlosangeles.com. That's where you can find